8. Sheree Miller Bruce Miller was shot dead in November of 1999 at a scrapyard he owned in Mount Morris, Michigan. His wife, Sheree, told investigators that Miller had recently argued with an employee named John Hutchinson who owed him money, bumping him to the top of the suspect list. However, Hutchinson maintained his innocence, and there was no evidence linking him to the case, which soon went cold. Three months later, a man named Jerry Cassidy committed suicide hundreds of miles away in Missouri. At his home, family members found a blank briefcase filled with evidence of his affair with Cherie Miller, including email exchanges, hotel and flight records, and chat printouts. There was also a letter addressed to his family, describing how Cherie had gotten pregnant by him twice and miscarried when her husband beat her. Cassidy confessed to killing Miller and wrote that Cherie helped plan the murder. The letter also accused Cherie of using Cassidy to get her husband killed so that she could keep his money for herself. Cherie had given Cassidy the cold shoulder after Miller's murder, showing that he was no longer of use to her. She'd also lied about being pregnant and used makeup to fake the bruises in photos she sent to Cassidy as evidence of her husband's alleged abuse. Prosecutors accused Cherie of having Miller killed because she would get less of his money if she simply divorced him. The defense claimed that the emails in Cassidy's briefcase were fake and that he took his own life due to financial issues and other personal problems unrelated to Cherie. A jury ultimately convicted her of murder and she was sentenced to life in prison. In 2008, a judge ruled that Cassidy's suicide note shouldn't have been allowed as evidence in Cherie's trial and overturned her conviction. Three years of legal fighting ensued and in 2012, the court reinstated her conviction and sentence. She has since admitted to her role in Miller's death. When interviewed by 2020, Cherie said that she turned to online chat rooms because her husband was often working or away on business. She spent copious amounts of time talking to men and became addicted to the sense of control she got from manipulating them. She described that her conquests were like a video game, with each man representing a new and more challenging level. 7. Robert Marks in 2016, a good Samaritan spotted a three-year-old girl alone in a Baton Rouge parking lot and dialed 911. Her mother, 40-year-old schoolteacher Lintel Washington, was nowhere to be found, and there was blood inside the woman's car. The little girl was exceptionally helpful to the case despite her young age. Based on the information she provided, police learned that Lintel was pregnant with 38-year-old Robert Marks' child, a married principal she'd met at work. Lintel's friends claimed that shortly before her disappearance, she discovered that Marks had lied about his intentions to leave his wife and planned to reveal the affair. A week after she vanished, sugarcane workers discovered her body in a remote field. The coroner ruled her cause of death as a single gunshot wound to the head. Marks denied any involvement in the crime, despite Lintel's daughter putting him at the scene. He challenged the little girl's credibility based on her age, but her story aligned almost perfectly with the evidence and it was clear to investigators that Marks had underestimated her intelligence. Phone records also placed him with Lintel on the night of the murder, and a second mistress confirmed that she'd picked him up in the parking lot where the victim's car and daughter were found. However, it seemed as though she was unaware that he'd just killed someone. Surveillance footage from a local restaurant proved that Marks was never there like he claimed, shattering his alibi and adding to the mounting pile of evidence against him. He continued to maintain his innocence, but was convicted of murdering Lintel and her unborn child. In the end, Robert Marks received a life sentence without parole. 6. Michael David White On a frigid morning in 1987, police found the strangled body of 20-year-old Darlene Krashok behind a restaurant in Colorado Springs. Krashok was an army mechanic stationed at nearby Fort Carson and had been out with friends the night before. Detectives investigated Darling's murder thoroughly but kept running into dead ends, and the case eventually went cold. The Army's Criminal Investigation Command re-examined the evidence in 2003 using DNA technology that didn't exist when Darling was killed. They obtained a male DNA profile, but it didn't match up with any convicted criminals in state or federal databases. In 2017, experts developed a profile of what the killer may have looked like at the time of the murder along with the composite of what he could look like in the present 30 years after the crime. However, it was the use of genetic genealogy that ultimately led them to Michael David White, a married army veteran in his late 50s with no criminal history. 
White was a respected community member who, by all appearances, enjoyed a successful career and a comfortable middle-class existence. He had never been a suspect in the case and had flown under the radar for upwards of three decades, remaining unnoticed in connection with the crime. Detectives secretly surveyed him until they saw him throw out a cup at a fast food restaurant. The DNA on the cup was a match to Darlene's killer. Justice finally came in 2021, when White was convicted of the young woman's murder and was sentenced to life in prison. To this day, he maintains his innocence, but as they say, DNA doesn't lie. 5. Martin McNeil In April of 2007, a respected doctor named Martin McNeil dialed 911 and reported finding his wife dead in the bathtub at their home in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Authorities initially ruled 50-year-old Michelle's death an accident due to natural causes, but things weren't exactly how they seemed. Just days earlier, the mother of eight had undergone a facelift at Martin's urging. She was reluctant to get the procedure at first, but Martin was adamant, and eventually she caved. Her husband convinced the surgeon to prescribe several narcotic medications that normally aren't given to patients after a facelift. In the days following the procedure, Michelle relied on Martin to administer her medication and was drugged to the point of being incapacitated. Her condition quickly improved after her daughter took over her care, but Martin's behavior remained a concern. Michelle made a chilling statement to her daughter suggesting that if something bad happened to her, Martin should be investigated. She also began to suspect Martin of having an affair with another woman. Her suspicions were correct, but that was just the tip of the iceberg when it came to the lies Martin had told his family. For decades, he had lived a double life filled with mistresses, a felony fraud conviction, and a psychiatric diagnosis that resulted in him being discharged from the army. He also collected disability payments from the military for 30 years while working full-time as a doctor and committed numerous other cons. Almost immediately after Michelle's death, Martin moved his mistress, Gypsy Willis, into the family's home. The couple ended up getting engaged less than three months later. In the meantime, Martin tried finding another family to take in three of the children that he and Michelle had adopted. He sent one of the kids to Ukraine and co-conspired with Willis to steal her identity. By then, several of his children suspected him of killing their mother. Thanks to their tireless campaign for an investigation into the case, Martin was charged with Michelle's murder in 2012. His lawyers maintained that her death was accidental and focused on the circumstantial nature of the case, which lacked scientific evidence against Martin. In the end, Martin was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison, where he took his own life in 2017. 4. Diane and Rachel Stort 61-year-old Mark Stort died suddenly in Springfield, Missouri in 2012, leaving behind a wife, Diane, and their four children. Doctors concluded that his death was natural, despite having an odd ring of blood around his mouth. In the meantime, the community rallied around newly widowed Diane, a trained nurse, musician, and devout Christian, who was also the sole breadwinner for her family. Five months later, the couple's autistic 26-year-old son, Sean, died after falling ill with flu-like symptoms. Like his father, he had a ring of blood around his mouth, but this was once again overlooked and Sean's death was ruled natural as well. The following year, Diane's 24-year-old daughter, Sarah, was rushed to the hospital with organ failure and brain bleeding. Doctors fought to save her life as authorities finally began to suspect foul play was involved. They discovered evidence of poisoning with antifreeze in both Sarah and tissue that had been saved from Sean's autopsy. Meanwhile, the family's pastor urged police to investigate the stored family deaths as he felt that something wasn't right. Diane admitted during questioning that she had poisoned Mark and Sean, stating that she hated her husband's guts and she described her special needs son as a bother and a pest. Detectives were shocked to discover through diary entries that Diane's 22-year-old daughter Rachel was an accomplice in the murders. Rachel testified against her mother and pleaded guilty to second-degree murder in exchange for a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 42 years. Diane was convicted on two counts of first-degree murder and received a life sentence. And while she doesn't deny killing her son and husband, she never fully took responsibility and has come up with a number of excuses for her actions. However, in the end, 
nothing justifies murder. Sarah miraculously survived with permanent physical and neurological damage and resides at an assisted living facility. During an interview with 2020, Diane said that she was sorry for what Sarah went through, but that she also feels sorry for her own suffering, once again failing to take responsibility for being a cold-blooded killer. 3. Sherry Papini 34-year-old mother of two Sherry Papini vanished in 2016 during a jog near her Redding, California home, leaving the community shocked and terrified. Her devastated husband Keith sobbed as he pleaded on national television for her safe return. Three weeks later, she appeared on a roadside hundreds of miles from her home. She was noticeably thin and covered in bruises, ligature marks, and other injuries. Sherry was reluctant to speak with investigators, who initially assumed that she was traumatized and approached the matter delicately. She claimed that two masked Hispanic women had abducted her at gunpoint. Over the following weeks, she was chained up, beaten, starved, and tortured at the hands of her captors, who chopped her hair off and branded her. However, the details didn't add up, and detectives became less patient with Sherry as they began to poke holes in her story. Phone records revealed evidence of infidelity, and male DNA found on her clothing led to her ex-boyfriend James Ray's. He eventually admitted that Sherry had convinced him to pick her up and take her to his home, claiming that Keith was abusive. Ray said that Sherry deliberately starved and injured herself so that the story she planned to tell would seem credible and that she followed her case in the news. His claims checked out and in 2022, Sherry was arrested for lying to police. After standing by her for years, Keith filed for divorce. Sherry admitted to the hoax in exchange for an 18-month federal prison sentence. She was also fined $300,000 for needlessly wasting police and community resources. 2. Loretta Burrows Danny Burrows was last seen alive in 2007 at the home he shared with his wife Loretta in Hamilton Township, New Jersey. Loretta divorced him shortly after he disappeared claiming that he'd left her for another woman despite the couple's plans to move to Florida. She then sold their home and moved on her own. While investigating Loretta for embezzlement in 2013, police carried out a search warrant on her home in hopes of finding evidence relevant to the case. Instead, they found containers filled with Danny's remains. He'd been stabbed to death and dismembered, and Loretta had carried his remains in totes over a six-year period and through three moves. The discovery came a few months after Danny's family had convinced investigators to reopen the case. They confirmed what they'd suspected all along, that Loretta was responsible for Danny's death. She claimed the killing wasn't planned, but acquaintances told police that she didn't want to move to Florida, which prosecutors argued was her motive for killing her husband. Loretta was convicted of first-degree murder in 2015 and was sentenced to 55 years in prison. At 63 years old, it was effectively a life sentence, and it's unlikely that she'll see freedom again before she passes away. 1. Pam Hupp 42-year-old cancer patient Bensi Faria was brutally stabbed to death at her Missouri home after a chemotherapy appointment in 2011. Her husband, Russ, discovered her body later that evening and was soon accused of her murder. He insisted he was innocent and had an airtight alibi, but was nevertheless convicted in the case. Russ appealed his case in 2015 and was allowed to introduce evidence pointing towards another possible suspect, Betsy's best friend, Pam Hupp. The woman had accompanied her to her chemotherapy appointment on the day of the murder and was the sole beneficiary of Betsy's $150,000 life insurance policy. It introduced enough reasonable doubt for the jury to acquit Russ, who worked tirelessly to find evidence linking Pam to the crime. Throughout the trial, Pam maintained her innocence and pointed the finger at Russ. In 2016, a mentally disabled man named Louis Gumpenberger was shot five times inside Hupp's home. She claimed that he'd attacked and robbed her and blamed the publicity she received during Russ's trial for making her a target. Around the same time, a woman reported that Hupp had recently tried to lure her into a vehicle by posing as a TV host and inviting her to be a contestant in a hidden camera show. Detectives theorized that she'd run the same scam on Gumpenberger and backed the claim up with phone records, which revealed that Pam was in the man's neighborhood shortly before the shooting occurred. 
Hupp took a plea deal in order to avoid the death penalty and was sentenced to life without parole. In 2021, she was charged with Betsy Faria's murder and is currently awaiting trial. According to the last update, she stands by her claim that Russ framed her for the crime. Would you rather get caught lying to authorities about a small crime or be accused of lying about a major crime when you are actually telling the truth? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.